Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows or are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm gonna talk about episode two of Jupiter's Legacy. A lot of interesting things went down. Yeah, a lot of interesting things went down in this episode. So let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we are literally picking up moments after uh, the previous episode's ending with Black Star looking and examining and realizing, like, oh, this is like a um, a cheap knockoff. Uh, uh, you know, where it came from and stuff like that, we still don't know, but, um, he's like, oh, who did this? And Brandon, like, says, like, I'm the one that did it. He's like, oh, really? And obviously he's chastising, um, uh, Utopian because it's like, oh, like, oh, the fact of the matter is you want to act like, oh, you're such a high standard and stuff like that, and you want to lock us up for killing people. What about your son? Your son's a murderer. Oh, double standard. And it's like, and you could tell it bothered the hell out of, um, him because once again they are the, supposed to be as he says like above this they're supposed to be the ideal they, they're supposed to be a certain standard and the fact is killing someone is never okay in his book no matter what the circumstances are no exceptions so it is a thing of you know it's like oh you're just gonna be okay with it like regardless of whatever that is black star copy whatever alternate parallel dimension whatever shapeshifter that's still someone that he murdered your son murdered him so it's like that weighs heavy on him more so than anybody because you want to he has in his mind you know this is good and this is the pinnacle of what good is and falling beneath that is a big no-no you know so there's a press conference and I love, I, I misinterpreted those signs the, in, in uh, getting to pause them in the show. The sign says, your value, our lives. In the sense that because they're all about, oh, let's not kill anybody. The fact is, supervillains are allowed to run rampant. Supervillains have been rising up more and more to get revenge. You're locking them up. They're breaking out and they're killing us. So it's like your values are like, oh, let's not kill the bad guys. Lead to them coming and running amok and doing it. So it's the thing of like, you can understand where, um... Um, Sheldon is coming from because it's like the fact of the matter is like you know killing people without due process uh, you know that's not justice you know uh, you know and that's why due process is a thing because it's like you wouldn't want cops like oh just that, that, but that's, that's your thing you know you get certain like even in like superhero media wise you'll have characters like the Punisher, for example, which kills villains. Some people are like, oh, that's the appropriate way. But you have people like Batman who don't kill, who lock villains in Arkham, who constantly break out and kill people. A lot of people. So it's like, I don't think there's ever a clear solution for this. Like, I, once again, and I think this show is doing a great job of just painting that things aren't so clear black and white. There, there's such a gray area. Like, for like, you know... Sheldon isn't 100% right, but he's not wrong. The public's not 100% right, but they're not... Um, a hundred percent wrong either. Um, it's also the thing of like, like the statistics says like seventy eight percent of Americans are okay with what uh Paragon or um Brandon did because they support it because it's like not nah, kill these super villains, put them in the ground because that's the only like you letting them live is putting us in danger. So what's more more important these values, these standards you hold, or our lives? You know, hence like I said the sign earlier, son really interesting conversation it's also interesting too to know like i feel like a lot of stuff doesn't depict that i want to say the boys is the only show that's depicted that invincible did it a little bit but like i don't i mean maybe some of the justice league cartoons did it but you don't see that too much in like modern day superhero shows like superheroes doing press conferences it's so crazy because it's like usually it's kind of like a oh, we keep it low-key we do doing our thing and we just kind of leave so them being having a literal press conference is such an interesting thing to me having to explain like yeah where did all the black star came from it's like this oh even being like you know um grace being like hey brandon uh, you know regrets his decision to do what he did i mean and that's the thing i wonder does grace fully oh grace says something later on that showcases she doesn't fully believe that you know because I don't think she shares, like, yes, the ideal is Sheldon's, it's his thing, and, like, and everyone else is kind of just kind of going with it, but I don't think she fully agrees with it. Which is also interesting getting insight into, like, Sheldon and um, Grace's relationship, finding out, like, oh, she was a reporter back in the day, so very Superman, uh, you know, Clark Kent and Lois. Uh, very different circumstances, obviously. But, um, because obviously the businesses are kind of failing, the board wants to shut down the business, which you have, um, you have Sheldon saying, like, no, we're going to keep it open, but for Walt, it's like, there's no money here, but for Sheldon, it's like, there's too many people's jobs that are on the line, like, too much is on the line if we just kind of shut down, but also, like, the newspaper, that's actually mad brutal and mad effed up, 
Uh, I'm assuming that's kind of true to the times, but that's super, super messed up. Like, the fact is, the picture of their dad's dead body on the sidewalk, it's like someone just went up, click, put it on the front page. I was like, once again, that's probably the time is like, eh. there could be an argument and commentary on like the fact that we, some outlets can like showcase like, hey, here's what this terrible person who did something like, oh, like here's his face, here's his name. Like, you know, some people make a point to be like, ah, I'm not going to give them their 15 minutes by showcasing their name. Like, I don't want to give them a platform to be like, oh, yeah, like these people want to be seen and known. So it, 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 it's it, not necessarily well, because they commentate on it later on to a su certain extent. But I, I just I, I'm wondering if that's what that meant to be or what it is just legitimately how they did things. And back then it's like it's so that's super jacked up. And obviously he's reading all this stuff about his dad. Like, oh, the dad uh, basically took the pension fund and basically used it to fund the expansion. And he was probably thinking like, no, nah, we'll make we'll make so much money. We'll get it all back. I'll be able to put it back before it's done. But it's like, nope. The market failed, the, um, and basically everything was lost, including the pension. He basically went in there, because at first they're like, oh, they think he's a lawyer or something. It's like, oh, wait, shit, you're one of the sons. And he's like, yeah, the fact of the matter is my dad helped build so much in this country. It's like, he tried to make this country great. Like, what have you guys done? You use your your, your words, you wag your fingers, but, like, what have you actually done to make America better? You know, and he ends up leaving. Well, Walt kind of eventually opens up to him and it's like, nope. Dad did everything he said, and now the pension's gone, and it's like we have to shut down the business for f like five months to kind of compensate for like any like if if we're going to keep any of our assets, we have to shut it down because for Walt kind of shows him is like yeah, me and Dad, it's like you 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 want to come in here and just like act like everything is honky dory. They had brought it up in the first episode that Walt was very like half gla glass half. Uh, empty type of guy, which is ironic considering everything their dad was up to. I think that's also why Walt was like, why are you acting like this, dad? Like, you don't believe in all of this. It's like, Sheldon's up here sniffing up all this BS that you're spewing, but the fact is you're behind the scenes doing the shady stuff. It's like, that's how business works. It's like, you know, it's like Sheldon, like, to get where we are, like, people have been wanting to tear us down ever since we put up our walls. So the fact of the matter is, we had to do, you know, you know, we gave it back just as much as we got it, even better sometimes. But it's like, we aren't, like, we weren't afraid. To, we had to get dirty. We got dirty. And it seems like Sheldon was kind of blind to a lot of that truth about the business. And obviously, a lot of the workers are upset. It's like, you owe us money. And these people he considered, like, you know, the whole mentality of, like, oh, your workers aren't just workers. They're, they're family. You know, and Sheldon kind of really believed that. And so we saw in the first episode, he was like, hey, guys, hey, uh, like, knows everybody by name. I should also point out, uh, Fitz's dad, Willie, is George Jones from uh, Debris, which is interesting because I'm hearing him with, like, an American accent. I'm like, ah, that's so cool. Uh, but regardless, it's a situation where um, Sheldon's, like, making all these promises to them, like, I'm going to try to get the, everything working back up. I'm trying to get you guys your money. But Willie and Fitz are the one kind of be like, don't. Like, beating up some rich kid isn't going to make you feel better. It's like, how do you know? Maybe it will. And it's like, it won't. You're just going to get yourselves locked up. You need to go take care of your families right now. Be there for them. You know, kind of let your anger slide. And one of the guys is like, yeah, hope the wedding's good, Shell. Because once again, these were people he considered family and friends. But now, like, they've turned them. Understandably so. It's like our entire livelihood's going up in flames because of you and your father. Like, he had nothing to do with it. But it's still, like, I, I think that's interesting that element of personal responsibility back then versus now. Cause I think present day, like a lot of those aspects, I think he's trying to instill upon his kids of like, you know, because regardless of not, like, I think maybe even back then he kind of felt like I am still responsible for my dad's action because it's our family name. I shouldn't have been blind to what he was up to, everything he was doing, you know? So I just think that's kind of an interesting element, which present day he is talking to Brandon about what he did. It's like, you didn't have to do that. Like, once again, the ideal, the standard, which for Brandon, and, you know, it's like, for him, it's like, why am I the disappointment? Why not Chloe? It's like, stop talking about you. He's like, no. Like, why am I getting in trouble for talking the same way Chloe does about all of us? It's like, because you don't need to stoop low kind of just to kind of, you know, make yourself feel better anytime someone pisses you off. Like, for him, it's like, you know, it's like, I know I'm not always the easiest dad, you know, and he he's able to acknowledge it to a certain extent, but it's like, eventually, you're going to have to take over for me, and you are, you're going to be stronger than me one day, because it's like, yes, I because it's like, you know, it's like Brandon's throwing those rocks at the cans, and his dad, he visions them, and it's like, I don't have that. It's like, you will one day, and it's like, but showcasing, like, there's other we ways of handling things, like, obviously, you've got to be smart about things. You got to think these things through, you know, and um, 
because for him, it's like I have to bury friends today, three of my friends, and the fact is that I didn't want. I did what I did. I would have chosen like you. I wanted to save you, Dad. I would choose you time and time again. If you were in my shoes, you'd do the same. His dad never ever gave a response. It's like, if the shoe was on the other foot, and maybe that's kind of foreshadowing for it to be on the other foot, will, you know, Sheldon step up? Will, like, will he cross that line if, you know, his family is in enough danger? Because it's like, well, the people, because that's the thing. The people that died, they weren't your family. But if it was like, if it was Sheldon, I mean, if it was, um, if it was Brandon there, if it was Chloe there, if it was your own brother, if it was your wife, like, who would you cross that line for? Would you, would you still keep, you know, like, you got, I mean, I think it's for him, it's like, if you're going to keep, you have to keep the same consistency. And the question is, will he, you know? So that's an interesting development and just conversation. And it's like, you know, everything, it's that old thing too of like, everything you do is a reflection upon this family. Like, you know, so basically the legacy that they're building and the standard they're living by is like you're what you do has a like it's so interesting that he is kind of chastising brandon because i think for him it's like and even brandon brought up last episode i didn't even talk about it it's like oh sis you're cool you're jealous of me because he chose me it's like no i actually feel sorry for you that he chose you because now you're trying to live to this standard that's impossible to live by to ever be good enough you know and like the argument could be because of his own flaws and his own failures, that's why his expectations are so high because he's trying to live to the standard and he know he doesn't. And so he wants his children to be even better than him, you know? And it's like, that's a lot to kind of put on their shoulders. That's a lot of weight to kind of put on them, you know? But for him, it's like, this is for the betterment of the world. So we have to, you know, we can't just like kill villains or whenever whenever we want to and I, I i think that's such an interesting development because we've seen that time and time again in a lot of superhero stuff of like you know oh you lock the villain up they just get out it's like you know because so, people say that time and time again about batman it's like why don't you just kill the joker because you let him live it's just but it's also like, yeah but like what about you know crossing that line it's like you know it's that's that's a complicated thing of like ah oh, when is enough enough you know um Hell, even later on, he goes to Chloe's uh, place to talk to her because for him, it's like, I want you to talk to your brother. And she's like, why don't you? It's like, because it's like, no matter what I do, like for him, it's like anytime you want to try and say the right, you want to say the right thing. But every time you try, it just doesn't come out right. And it's like, he's not going to listen to me or your mom, but he will listen to you I'm trying to be there for him. Um, and it's like, will you go to the funeral and, you know. And she's like, maybe it's like, I just want you to you be there for your brother, you know, eventually even saying, can you be there for me? But it's like for Chloe, it's like considering everything that happened, she understands how like, what can I say to Brandon? Like he's known um, he's known uh, Barry since junior high. Like he's even his uh, the godfather to his kids. And then he's like looking like. Who you do? I was like, oh, are you losing your memory or something? And I thought he's going to be like, all right, right, Barry, Barry. But it's like she's like, Barry. And he was like, oh, right, right, tectonic. And for her, it's just like, right. That's the effed up thing. It's like, oh, you don't even know their personal names. It's like, and that's a conversation later on because, like, at the funeral, it's like, they weren't like this and that. It's like, this, these were, you know, he names them. It's like, these these were people. He knows they were, he refers to them as, like, but first and foremost, before being superheroes, they were people. I know their name. And the ir irony behind it is his dad doesn't. He knows them only as their superhero names. And for her, it's like, that's my point. The fact of the matter is you can never stop being utopian. Like this whole like being Sheldon thing, it's a it's a front. And it's that's an interesting conversation. Once again, make drawing parallels. It's like the Superman thing of like, oh, like being Superman is who you really are because that's the Kryptonian in you. And in, in this particular case, being utopian is you who you are. This whole front of your being Sheldon, your Clark Kent, that's not really who you are. It's a facade and it's like, you know. You not being you would kind of be a bad thing. And it's like, because for Chloe, it's like, do you realize like what you've kind of done to me? Like everything, I've any conversation I've ever had with you has been an attack on who I am, whether it's how I dress. Like, my, like um, obviously he, he makes these snide remarks about her magazine covers and stuff like that, trying to tell her to be more modest. Uh, the fact of the matter is like who I date. It's like so many aspects of my life, you take shots at me for, you, and you wonder why I fight you every time, like why every conversation we have turns into a fight. Cause it's like you, you it's like the fact of the matter is the only way we're not gonna fight is if I'm not me and you're not you. But for him, it's like, that's a waste, you know? It's like, that's a lose-lose situation. You know, and it's like, it's just he's not getting it. You know, for him, it's like, 
He's trying to say like I don't. You always say that like, everything is a personal attack. The fact of the matter is, it's a basically say, a roundabout way of saying like it's a it's a a way to dodge personal responsibility accountability. He's like instead of just pointing fingers, and then he kind of catches his mouth and close like, yeah, you just like proving my point, Dad. And he just kind of stops, and it's like it's a thing that Chloe kind of talks about. It's like you or rather, yeah, I think it was Chloe that says like. Who would know? Somebody else says like he can never admit when he's wrong. I, I, it might even been Chloe that said that. It might even been not last episode. I'm kind of blurring some stuff in my head, but it's like he can never ever admit when he's wrong. Um, so I just thought that was interesting. It's just like, can you be there? And she's like, I don't know. Sadly, we find out later on she didn't go to the funeral. Uh, there's also the angle with uh, Petra and her dad Fitz. Uh, I didn't talk about it last episode, but it seems like they're just speedsters. Um, and everything, so Fitz is kind of confined to a wheelchair, and it's like, hey, did you ever lose anyone during your superhero time? And he was like, no. So he can't understand that level. I think there have been people he's lost subsequently, but not while he was doing the superhero thing. Uh, but for, for him, it's like, you know, you can fight, th you know, fight, um, through it, and he was referencing the fear, you know, it's like, you know, for her, it's like, I'm not like you, I can't get hit and just kind of get back up, you know, afterwards, but, um, for him, it's like finding a way through to fear is kind of a very important thing. And for him, it's like, I didn't even want you to go into this whole superhero thing. Superhero thing. I actually was surprised when you did. He's like, when I did, he makes it sound like he did some like, some very unscrupulous stuff like when he was a, uh, younger. I don't know what that necessarily is. I was wondering if it's like affairs and stuff like that, whether it's that, which he, he was kind of referring to. But it's like, for him, it's like, I just you're already better you're a better person than me so if you want to kind of quit the superhero thing for him it's like i'm okay with that you know it's just like the fact is you're alive to me that's all that matters and even later on um fitz is actually thanking brandon for what he did it's like you know my daughter's alive and i'm not going to forget i know i know exactly the reason why that is it's interesting too because like being at that funeral made him think about you know uh the uh, utopian and made well, uh showed it and made him think of his own father's funeral you know uh, now knowing the truth about his dad and the whole thing, like, hell, even his dad, um, he's like, yeah, my dad making that statement of, like, right, I'll be right down, right down, like it was some, like, effed up joke, you know, and, um, because earlier when he was cussing Grace, well, calling Grace out, his nose started bleeding, and I was like, okay, and we find out at the funeral, like, he ends up having a seizure, it seems like it's all kind of related, but for him, it's a conversation of people aren't who you know them to be until the end. Like, that's when, like, uh, the wool kind of comes over your, from over your eyes and you're able to kind of see things for what it really is. And he's kind of got this new perspective on his dad. His dad isn't who he thought he was, you know? And maybe that's, all, once again, another angle to this because his dad ended up being who he was. His dad had created his standard and Sheldon feels like he has to live up to it because it's like, well, because it also seems like his dad potentially set him on this uh, quest. So it's like, I need to be, live up to this standard. Like it's, because even the standard he's kind of created, is, I think is based off of his dad. And it's like, even that standard isn't real. It's like, you're living off a standard that, I think for him, it's like that fake standard, like he held on to it for so long. And I think both you know present day as well as back then i think he took like a lot of stuff from his dad and just kind of applied it in this it's like yeah it might have been a lie in my dad's uh when it came to my dad but i'm gonna make it true i'm gonna hold to it and he doesn't want to break that code he doesn't want to uh because it for him he'd be feeling like he's failing just like his dad did and even like hearing brandon's speech about like i failed them like no matter how hard you try you always end up coming up short and so he has Fitz thanking him. He goes to Karen, like, well, i do anything for you. It's like, could you get your uncle to wipe their memories? It's like, my uncle doesn't do that, especially the kids, because I think maybe it gets a slippery slope because it's like, you don't know what kind of uh, irreparable damage that could do later on. But for her, it's just like, I need, because it turns out like they put what happened to Barry on the, like online. It's like, that's how the girls found out about their dad. Didn't cover it up. And we saw what Barry's body looked like. It's like, they didn't blur it out. And I think that's the effed up thing. Like, that's why I was like, the interesting parallels between then and now, but also like, you can make war real world comparisons. Because sadly, there are like, because like even real world wise, autopsy photos of people leak and that's super fucked up like stuff like that the sad i've i've i consider myself very fortunate i've never been in a position because i don't go actively looking for that i've been fortunate enough to not have that like news wise blasted in my face some people had the decency not to just kind of put that shit out but it, it there that you 
it the sad thing is it's not that hard to come across that sometimes like it is it, you can't stumble across that like depending on like the outlet and stuff like that it's just it's kind of crazy to think about that so once again it's like yeah it's in this very like fantasized you know superhero world but i think you can make you know real life comparisons in that regard but um the cops like had you know put a fund together for him and it's like all right uh here you know you know whatever you need like you know and obviously the cop that's like man there's been too many funerals you know both for the superheroes and the co cops but the cop is like yeah just basically line up all the supervillains and kill them all what you did black star that's the right move and so it's this conflicting thing where it's like his dad is telling him you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong and so many people in the public are like you're right you're right you're right and it's like what are you doing that even later on it pisses um him off being like the fact is that um Half the people, uh, not uh, him, but um, his dad is like, half the people at the funeral were thanking Brandon for what he did. But for Grace, it's like, we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now if Brandon hadn't done what he'd done. So, like, you know, but for him, it's like, we can't do that. Like, we we have to be better. We have to do better, you know? So it's like, it's a complicated, there's no easy, you know, solution to the entire situation. So I just, like I said, and that that moment to me also shows, like I said, even Grace is kind of conflicted because it's like, it was kind of a necessary thing considering the circumstances, but at the same time, it's like, maybe she's always felt this way. Um, maybe, who knows, maybe, you know, I'll go and believe in Sheldon's um, belief in this code and everything, but maybe she didn't always believe, who knows how the rest of the group feel. We know how Fitz feels about it now, just because the supervillain epidemic is running rampant and so many people are dying because of it, you know? So we'll see how that kind of turns out. But uh, back in the past, obviously um, Sheldon ended up having that dream. It seems like it's all tied to his dad telling him, find the island, save America. And it's like, was that actually their dad or was it someone manifesting themselves at his, as his dad? Because, like, when um, he wakes up, he sees, like, you see it from behind, but it's his dad, like, after, because, like, the way his head is, his brain's exposed and everything. It's like, oh, that's him after everything. So it's like, what was that? Like, was, because, like, what did that vision, like, something or someone reached out manifesting themselves as his dad, like, you, you're kind of chosen at basically get your crew together, get to the boat, get to the island. And for him, it's like, I got a message from dad, you know, and it's like, huh, I wonder what that's all about. Like, I wonder just present, I'm, obviously, once again, I haven't seen that the rest of the season yet. I'm watching, watching these one at a time, but it's like, I'm wondering if we're going to find out, does he know the answer to that present day that that was his dad or has he just been latching onto it? Like, oh, my dad, dad sent me a message from the great beyond. It's like, no, like that was something pretending to be your dad for the greater good because it's like oh you need your powers and set you on this course to be the heroes i think it's interesting and they make a point of this like save america it's like not the world america it's like it's so interesting when they do that because it's like uh because some superheroes are like a worldwide thing where other things are like obviously some superheroes like are like even like the dc universe like the justice league like each of them kind of have their own cities like batman has gotham um Star City, you know, Central City and stuff like that, like, the, the respective heroes, um, but obviously, like, they are worldwide superheroes, too, like, Superman goes worldwide as well, so it's, a, it's that interesting development, but it's like, I thought that was such an interesting thing, where it's like, oh, America, but it's like, does, like, the rest of the countries have their own heroes, or is it just kind of, like, an America thing, because, like, they have you, like, and the only reason why your kids have powers are because they're your kids, so... Does that mean the rest of the world doesn't really have heroes? Is it just America? Does that mean the rest of the world has supervillains and no heroes to really protect them? Do you guys go worldwide or is it just a, now we protect America? We are America first because we're, it seems like that's kind of like the main and utter focus. I just thought that was kind of interesting. Once again, like how that, the decision making behind that, whether or not, why not be a worldwide hero thing? But I guess it's like, to be fair, they have a, they're very uh, patriotic, and it's like, the, you know, considering the time they're from, the, the world that they lived in. I mean, hell, even then, it's like, remember, they didn't really participate in World War II. I mean, when you look at the history books, it took a long-ass time before America got involved in the world in World War II, so that's just kind of interesting. Um, you know, I didn't even think about that, too. It's like, all right, like, Wonder Woman took place in, well, the movie uh, took place in World War One. so it's like, oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Like, obviously, Captain America participated in World War Two. It's like, oh, you just, think, once again, just stuff like that slipped in my mind. I, once again, I'm not trying to, like, oh, compare and contrast. It's just interesting because it's like, oh, yeah, these there are these other, like, comic book-related things I can draw parallels to and just thinking, like, oh, that is interesting, like uh, having a superhero on the war front and what that kind of means. And there's also the thing of, once again, not 
doing too much, but also not doing too little. But, you know, who can really gauge what is too much and too little when you're considering, like, the death and destruction that was World War II, like, encapsulated everything, you know? So, um, just an, an interesting um, aspect, an interesting um, thing to kind of keep in mind. But, uh, yeah. Very interested to ultimately see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, low like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.